market, no matter where you live across this great country. We know you all have them. But now, what do you do with your produce? Well, Jason Parsons is here to tell us Hello. what to do with that amazing, fresh, local produce. We're going to make jam, strawberry yeah. rhubarb basil well, jam. Every market you go to, they've got the jams, they've got the pickles, and we all see these things. But, you know, it's so easy to make at home. That's right. You know, Before we make no. anything, though, I knew can, you were going to get into this. Can you just can you just look at that camera no. right there? No. And give us a nice smile. Well, like give this? us a good like grin. This? Do you mm. notice something missing? Jason had a good weekend. <laughs> <laughs> a good uh, weekend. What happened to your tooth? I'm just going to say Muskoka Cottage, Pella <laughs> Wine, and let's leave it at that. Okay? <laughs> let's leave it at that. I love uh, it. <laughs> I love it. Let's make jam. Thanks for bringing that Toothless up. Okay. Wonder. Well, that's how you open up the jar when you get uh, done. But anyway, <laughs> jams. It's kind of intimidating because there are some certain rules, but the rules really come to the actual process, not what you want to put in there. You can really much go in. So I've got okay. some fresh strawberries and really... The thing is, fruit needs to be very clean when you're doing a jam. You don't want any kind of contaminants in there. Okay. So you actually want to just remove the stems. And if you have one of those little clippers, you can actually you know, just take all the root right out. You can cut them down to any texture you want. This is the thing I find interesting is some people like that jam that's completely smooth. Yes. Take this, throw in a fruit processor, puree it down, there you go. But if you like really chunky jam, I've just chopped it up like this. And anywhere in between, you can crush it down, you can do whatever you want, but you're setting the texture now. Okay. So it's, you know, just, and, uh, you know, basically I've got, what, about two cups of strawberries here. What are those ones? This is rhubarb. I just oh, chopped up some rhubarb. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you can tell yeah. I'm in the kitchen all the well, time. And you can use fresh, <laughs> fresh rhubarb is great. I actually um, couldn't find any fresh last night, so I just grabbed a bit of frozen. That's fine too. Very nice. You know, um, okay. but you just basically just put it right in there like that. Now, this is the thing that kind of, when you buy a jam, you love it, you appreciate it. You only put a little bit on toast. When you make it, you tend to realize how much sugar is in jam. Is it still better though than getting, <laughs> there's still, he's still putting more sugar in. Is it still better than, oh the whole bowl, huh? Oh yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is it still better though than going to the store and buying um, a jar? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, there's, there's pros and cons to both. I mean, yeah. you know, the thing is, is when you're buying somebody else's, you are kind of putting in trust that they've done it properly and that, right. but you know what, there's some amazing people out there that are making amazing jam and you have to go to these places and try them. Right. Um, but I think it's, you know, let's make it at home. Yeah. And there are ways of doing like low, um, low sugar pectins and stuff like that to kind of decrease the amount of sugar, but I've never really been in, uh, into that. Yeah, come on, <laughs> let's do this right, okay? Let's so just do it right. So my fruit. Strawberries, rhubarb, the sugar. Yes. And then I added actually a little bit of ginger in here. I thought that was Ooh, kind of a nice little component, you know. And literally what you do is you don't have to stir this, you don't have to mix it, you just put it on the stove on a low heat mm -hmm. and let it tick and tick and tick and it will actually cook down to that. You're kidding me. Yeah. You don't do anything with that, Nothing. you just put it on the heat. That is it right there. Okay. It just because all the juices come out of the fruit, mm -hmm. the sugar starts to dissolve. You want to be careful it's on a low heat because the sugar can burn on you. Okay. Yes. So I always, what I do is I actually turn, um, a, well, I have a flat top stove, but you can turn it on really, really low and just kind of make sure you've got a thick bottom pan yes. and just move it off the side a little bit and let it tick down. Let it tick, and once it's turned to liquid, then you can put it on high. Oh, right? Okay. But you've got to get it dissolved first. All right. And How long is that whole process? Oh, that was only like maybe five minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, five minutes. All right. Uh, but then what you want to do is bring it up to a hard boil, and you can see that this is where the important part is, is it's about keeping it clean. You get all this kind of scum or, you know, foam on the top. Mm -hmm. You want to skim that off. You now, don't want any of that? No, and it's actually purely eye appeal. I mean, there probably is a little bit of taste to it, but it's not that issue. Okay. It's more of an eye appeal because it gives your jam that nice clear. So what I do is I like to boil a little bit, skim, skim, skim. Once I've got my fruit down to the point where it's a nice texture like look at that that's fantastic mm -hmm. now this is where we have to add our pectin so okay do we have time to do the whole thing now yeah we do oh, okay we do we do, we do. we've we got do. it so we pour our pectin in whole package i'm putting a little bit of lemon zest in there for freshness how do you know that's going to work when you add in things like ginger and lemon well, zest the strawberries just... and lemon work yeah yeah Right, well, ginger, I mean, that's a bit of a, you know, kind of a trial and error thing, but I've yeah. tried ginger before, but I and like a little works. spice in there. But, you know, just adding, and then I'm adding a little lemon juice. And then what I want to do is just bring this to a boil for one minute mm -hmm. and then take it off and skim it for five minutes. Let it kind of just remove all those impurities. Okay. Okay, once you've done that, then you're literally just going right into your jars. And the jars, what I've done is I've actually put them in a pot of boiling water and sterilized them first. That's important. It I is. mean, you you want to be able, you want everything to be very very clean. Very clean. And this does this have to be at a certain temperature before you put nope. it in? Okay. You want it well. You want to go straight from the stove after those five minutes straight into the jars. You heat. Got it. You want to maintain that heat, and you're just about a better quarter of an inch from the top. Yeah. Okay. 
Keep your, uh, and it's really important, again, the rim's all nice and clean. And then the lids, they used to say boil the lids, but I think nowadays you just need to actually soften the actual rubber on them a little bit. So you can just soak them. Okay, mm -hmm. place that on top. Oh, I forgot my basil in there. Put a you need basil. the basil. You need the basil in there. Also, like it looks that. really cute. Now, here's the cool thing, though, is everybody starts to tighten down this. You don't. You just want to let it snug like that. Yeah. Because what these lids are is they're actually got a two-way valve on them, that rubber. Okay. So you actually drop it right into a hot bath. Watch your fingers. Ooh, 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 like okay, that. good. Okay. And they have those little tongs that you can pick them up in there. Yeah. But what you're doing is you're putting it in there, yeah. and you're going to boil it for at least 10 minutes. There's this whole graph on the, you know, on the thing about eight minutes for this and so many hours to do that. You know what? Do it for at least 10 to 12 minutes. You're good. Okay. What you're doing is you're actually boiling it. The air that's trapped between the top of the jam and the jar is going to steam. It's going to come out through that valve, through the rubber, allow it to come out. Yeah. And then what we're going to do is when we've got a finished product, which I'm going to try and pick it up with these tongs, which will be interesting. Oh. Oh, that looks great. Yeah. And then what happens is you put it on a cloth. Do not put it on a tile counter because mm -hmm. glass on something might crack. Yeah. Pull it out and let it cool, and you'll see that this right now is pushed up. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you'll hit, and I love it when you're making jam in the kitchen. You hear, yeah. You know, but that goes down. And what happens is it sealed it, preserved it, and now it's ready to go and on the shelf. it's ready to go. Yeah. Okay, all right, this was amazing. JC, I, I need to get your opinion. Yeah, I need, come, come in here. JC is our floor director. Give her a hand. Okay, she makes jam, and she's like, it's so easy. This did not look that easy. So you saw the whole process. Yeah. What do you think? Did he do it all right? He did a fantastic job, and it is easy. It's not try easy. it. That's, you know what? Try some of his. I will. Just try mm. it, and I'm going to go walk over to Leanne now. Mm. Good. Okay, she did yeah. a dance. That means yeah. it's really good. Okay, now I'll go to